As we're figuring out patterns for derivative rules that can save us lots of time when we're calculating derivatives, there's one fairly technical notion that becomes really helpful that I want to talk about now. This is, uh, this is really easy to explain with the picture, so I'm going to start with the picture. But then, since I want to use that to calculate derivatives using the definition of derivative, I want to translate that easy, intuitive picture into something very technical and concrete that I can use in my calculations. So first, the picture. Um, the idea is, if you've got a graph of a function, I'll give you three different graphs here. If you've got a graph of a function, um, and let's pick a specific x value to look at, let's say x equals a, then if the graph um, is smooth at a, so there are no breaks in the graph, no holes, no jumps, then we'll say that the graph is continuous there. And the idea is if you take your pencil or your pen and you're tracing over that graph, um, if your graph is continuous at x equals a, then you won't have to pick up your pencil or your pen at that point. It's pretty obvious from these three graphs that the top one is continuous and the bottom two are not continuous. They're discontinuous at x equals a. But I want to know how I can write that in a technical way that will help me when I'm looking at derivatives, calculating derivatives. So let's just focus on the top one first. Um, if I'm calculating a derivative, then I'm taking I'm starting at x equals a, and I'm finding the slope of the tangent line at x equals a by letting first that x equals a move out a little bit. I'll call the, the little bit that we're letting x grow, I'll call it delta x. Sometimes it's also called h. I'll call it delta x, which is triangle x. Um, it means change in x. If I then calculate the slope of the line that goes through the two points, slope of the secant line, and then I take the limit of that as delta x shrinks down to zero, that gives me the slope of the tangent line. That's the derivative at x equals a. That's what I'm after. So let's, let's look at what's happening to the top part of this and the bottom part of this derivative. The limit as delta x goes to zero of change in y over change in x. Let's represent the change in y as delta y. So as we let that change in x shrink down to zero, look at what, what's happening to the change in y. It's also shrinking down to zero. And if you think about it, in order for this limit to give us a number, in order for this derivative to exist and give us a number, since the bottom of this fraction is shrinking down to zero, that top part better be shrinking down to zero as well. If the top is not shrinking down to zero and the bottom is shrinking down to zero, then that limit is just going to be infinity or negative infinity. So we know if this derivative exists and we have a slope of the tangent line, then as this delta x, this change in x shrinks down to zero, that change in y has to shrink down to zero. So that's going to be a condition for continuity, for um, for our function being continuous at x equals a. Now, let's look at the other two pictures real quick just to make sure that this idea still works with those two pictures. So first, this little continuity where you've just got a hole in the graph and the function is defined um, kind of randomly at this one point, the y value just jumps where you have a hole in the graph. Um, if you look at what happens to the change in y for this derivative, as you let delta x, the change in x, shrink down to zero, that change in y is not shrinking down to zero. It's limiting to a constant. It's limiting to what the actual y value is there at x equals a minus where uh, the y value where that hole is. So since that delta y is not shrinking down to zero, this limit delta y over delta x as delta x shrinks to zero will not exist. And then let's look at this one where you have this infinite discontinuity, where the graph is approaching either infinity or negative infinity. And let's think about what's happening in the limit of delta y over delta x for this one. 
as we let that change in x shrink down to zero for this function, the change in y is just growing. It's getting bigger and bigger, either in the positive direction or the negative direction, depending on how we drew this. But the delta y is just getting bigger and bigger as the delta x shrinks down to zero. So the limit of delta y over delta x as delta x shrinks to zero is definitely either positive infinity or negative infinity. It is not just some constant number that we could apply a slope, that we could, it's not just some constant number that gives us a slope. So a function is continuous at x equals a if and only if the limit as your change in x shrinks down to zero of change in y is zero.